right, so this is chapter three, section one, lines and angles notes. Um, our learning objectives. All right, so get your highlighters handy. I'll get mine out. All right, so we're going to identify relationship between figures in space, and figures for us in geometry mean like lines, planes, points, etc. And identify angles formed by two lines and a transversal. Um, I think out of everything, that's probably the most important part. Um, an essential understanding and something that really hangs people up is that not all lines um, and not all planes intersect. And if you look, the wall in the back does not intersect with this wall where the, my board is. Those are parallel. So they don't intersect. Even if I extended them up infinity, left, right, up, down, and did the same with this wall, left, right, up, down, they still would not intersect. So realizing when things can intersect and when things cannot is important. All right. So the first definition that we're going to talk about is parallel lines. And parallel lines are, please write this down, coplanar lines that do not intersect. Assemble two lines up and down right next to each other means is parallel to. It's really important that because we're going to start using this symbol more and more frequently. Two lines next to each other means parallel to. All right, so symbols. So from this diagram, we look at AE. So let's find AE here. That's this front left corner. And it's a line because look at the arrows go on to infinity. So it's got arrows on to infinity. It's parallel to BF. Or is it parallel to BFF? Um, so BF is also a line. The two are side by sides and they do not intersect. Um, if you look, AD, which is this line on the top, is parallel to BC. So that's what all the symbol symbology represents. Okay. Um, the poor, these poor lines that usually get forgotten are skew lines. Skew lines are non-coplanar. They are not parallel and they do not intersect. So they're both non-parallel, but they don't intersect ever. So if we're looking at it, AB, which is this front line right here, and CG, which is this back line. So AB is in the front, CG is in the back. They are skewed. All right, parallel planes are the top and bottom plane planes of our figures. They are, thankfully, just as they sound, they are planes that do not intersect. How many letters do we need to identify a plane? Although they're using four, just so we can be more specific, four or three is fine. So in this case, plane ABCD is parallel to plane EFGH. All right. A line and a plane that do not intersect are parallel. Segments and rays can also be parallel or skew. So we're going to extend this not only to lines and planes, but to rays and segments. They are parallel if they lie in parallel lines and skew if they lie, lie in skew lines. All right, so let's, we're going to identify which um, happens to be my favorite part of geometry because it's the part that needs the least amount of explanation is identifying. You just have to go with these guys over here and those guys over there. It's not difficult life issues. Okay, so problem number one, identifying non-intersecting lines and planes. In the figure, so check out this box. Assume the lines and planes that appear to be parallel are parallel. Which segments are parallel 
to line segment AB. So parallel would be EF, DC, and HG. Does it matter which letter comes first? No, it doesn't. So I can write HG or I can write GH. Either way, identifying. As long as you have the two letters, you're fine. Which segments are skew to CD? So if you look, BF, it's on this back corner. Um, AE, it's on the front corner. EH is on the bottom front. And FG is this back. That right there. And what are two pairs of parallel planes? Well, top and the bottom, ABCD, is parallel to the bottom, EFGH. Now, my suggestion, keep it alphabetical when you can, just to make your life easier when you're identifying items. If order doesn't matter, keep it alphabetical. Uh, plane DCG, which is DCG, it's this right-hand side, is parallel to plane ABF, which is this left-hand side. And what are two segments parallel to plane BCGF? So BCGF is this back side of our box. And AD is parallel to that plane. And DH is also parallel to that plane. All right, so we are going to do this. We're going to do this application ourselves. And you guys have a space on your paper to write the answers to these down. Which segments are parallel to AD? So we're looking at parallel lines. Any suggestions? So AD is right here. H for sure. And let's put the line segment on top of it so that we're legit. So EH agreed. So this one. BC definitely is parallel. What's the what's our other debatable issue? FG, but it doesn't sit. Let's look at the definition to see if FG me meets our definition. Parallel lines are coplanar lines. So, is FG on the same plane as AD? What if I had a plane that went diagonally through? these lines. So it cuts that right diagonally. Can you see if I had a plane that came out and cut the box diagonally, would that be the same plane? Yeah. So we can say that they're coplanar as well. So we're going to put FG. Um, explain why F, E, and C, D are not skew. F, E, and C, D. Ooh, that was a little bit of that discussion we just had. Are not skew. So the top right of the box and the bottom left of the box. Why aren't these guys skew? It's that parallel lines issue. If I cut the box diagonally and put a piece of paper there, I would have a plane. So because the plane EDCF makes them coplanar, they're not skew. The plane um, EF. Makes them coplanar and not skew. What is a 
another pair of parallel planes. So we, um, above we did plane A, B, C, D, and E, F, G. We did D, C, I'm going to erase this so you guys can see. We did D, C, G, and A, B, F. So we did the top and bottom, we did the left and right, so now we can do front and back. So what's the front plane? A, A, E, H, D, and the back side. Uh, I'll BF. Thank you. BFCG. And let me type that up so that you guys can actually read it in no normal English language instead of, I would say that's probably Hebrew. So, planes AEHD. and uh, FBCG. How about that? Better reading? Awesome. Let's extend this page. What are two segments parallel? Let me erase it real quick. What are two segments parallel to plane DCGH? So D I just need, yeah, I just need two segments. So, love it. EF and AB. Awesome. All right. Next page. When a line intersects two or more lines, the angles formed at the intersection create special angle pairs. So we are going to talk about a transversal. So a transversal is a line that intersects two or more coplanar lines at distinct points. You guys don't have to write the diagram below. A transversal line is a line that intersects two or more coplanar lines at distinct points. So, just to review, vertical angles are congruent and like this, angle one is congruent to angle two. So, looking at our figure here, I know they're talking about exterior and interior based on the transversal, but which two angles, what two angles, and there's a whole bunch of them, in our figure are vertical angles? One and three definitely are vertical, so they're congruent. So as we're pushing forward beyond this point, and looking at angle relationships, because if we look back to our learning objective, it's to use angle relationships to or identify angle relationships. So one and three are vertical, two and four are vertical, five and seven, and six and eight. All those angles have a relationship and are congruent. All right. So pairs of the eight angles. So Angles 1 through 8 here have a special, all have special names. Um, so let's roll those out. Alternate interior angles. So we look at the ones that are interior and then they alternate. So like 3 and 5 are alternate interior angles and 4 and 6. I like these, the way they label these because it is exactly what they are. They're interior and they 
Alternate interior angles are non-adjacent interior angles that lie on opposite sides of the transversal. Please remember the transversal is the one that crosses the two lines. Transversal is really important and being able to identify a transversal versus anything else is also important. All right, the next one I love, same side interior. That's exactly what it says. Lines that are interior, so they're on the inside of our two lines, and are on the same side. So in our case here, angles 4 and 5, and angles 3 and 6. Do you guys need a moment to write? Yeah. All right, corresponding angles. Um, the, the corresponding angles is a weird one because this one you kind of have to remember. Just like vertical, I would put them in the same status as vertical angles. Corresponding angles are really mega important. Um, they lie on the same side and are in the same position. So if you look at one, let me move this guy. So if you look at 1 and 5, they're on the same side and they're both top left in respect to the transversal. So their positions are, they're, they're like living the same lives. Like 1 and 5, oh, they're living parallel lives together. Um, those are corresponding angles and I would highlight corresponding angles because that's kind of important. So give corresponding angles a highlight. All right, I'm going to do alternate interior angles. If you haven't written it all down, it's okay. We'll pause and get it to you. Alternate exterior are awesome because they're just what it says. Non-adjacent exterior angles that lie on opposite sides of the transversal. So they're not side by side non-adjacent. They're on the outside of our lines, either on the top or on the bottom, and they're on opposite sides. So in this case, it would be 1 and 7 and 2 and 8. Yay, so the next thing we're going to do is some more identifying. Awesome! So um, if you have a multiple choice question like this, and I'm assuming you will on your quiz um, that you're going to take for section 3, 1, which is a pair of alternate interior angles. So here's your transversal. Is this R? And it crosses M and N. And alternate interior, so we want to be on the inside and we want to be on different, either the top and the bottom or the bottom and the top. So 1 and 3 are definitely not alternate interior because 1 is exterior. 6 and 7, 6 is here. These are same side interior. 2 and 6, 2 and 6 is a yes. And 4 and 8 are exterior, so it is C. All right, so we're going to use this figure. What are three pairs of corresponding angles? So they are corresponding angles. So who is 8's corresponding angle? 6. 6, awesome. And who is 2's corresponding angle? 4. And let's just do one because he's number one. Angle one and angle three. Awesome. So now you have all the information you need to complete the practice and the quiz for section three.